Hello everyone and welcome to another insightful YouTube video talking about something that's going to help you build your financial world and reach the financial goals that you have. So into today's video we're talking about how really do you make money from buying shares or investing in shares in the JSE? How do you accumulate that wealth and how do you really see it and get it? So this is the question I've been getting through through the community that I have built. And the nice thing about this question that it shows that the community and the audience I have created, the subscribers that I have here on YouTube, the followers that I have on my Twitter account, are really are taking my words into action. I have built a community of people who are taking, who are, I build a community of people who are taking the things that I say in my videos, in my tweet, and into action because those people are now buying those shares. People now are buying into, into the JSE market, into the New York stock market, into the Australian market using easy equity. And now they want to know how do I really make money from this, Ivan? How do I really see the growth of it? So if you are one of those people, I'll be answering that question today. If you are still want to know how do you really Sorry, how do you really buy shares? How do you really get to invest in the New York stock market, the joint spec stock market, and the Australian market? You can watch the, my, one of my previous videos. I'll put it in the video card above so you can go watch it. But before we get into today's video, please do ensure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and ensure that we reach that 3,000 uh, subscriber uh, 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 mark that we are targeting right now. So let's get into today's video. Hello wonderful people and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel we talk about everything personal finance, self-development, ensuring that we reach financial freedom together as young people, together as students, together as young professionals trying to build ourselves as brands. So in today's video we are focusing on how really do you uh, gain, how really do you make money from investing in shares and and how do you really even see the growth of your shares and what is the value of buying shares and, and holding them? I will be focusing on that in today's video. As always, guys, it really is important for me to remind you guys that I am not a registered financial advisor. Just take everything I say with a pinch of salt. This is just for educational purposes. I do not aim to be a financial advisor to you because this video is targeted to a large number of audience with different circumstances. So what I say may not apply to your exact circumstances. So it really is important to take that into account. So in order to be able to earn money from buying shares in the New York stock market, the joint stock market, or in the Australian market, there are only two ways we should earn money from it. Absolutely two ways. When you buy your shares, let's say you just use Capitec, I've been using Capitec throughout my videos. For example, when you buy shares in Capitec and you put 2,000 there and you buy two shares from Capitec, forgive me, you buy two shares from Capitec, each is 1,000 rand, is an example. You really have not made or gained anything by buying. By buying, you're just that you are holding those shares. They go down, they go up, you haven't gained anything from it. The only way you will gain is through two ways, capital gain or dividends. Those are the only two ways you can earn money from buying and holding those two shares from capital. So for example, when you talk about capital gain, you're talking, for example, you buy those capital shares today, each share is 1,000 Rand, you buy two of them, which means you bought them for 2,000 Rand. In the next five years, both those shares, both those shares increase in value. From, from from 1,000 Rand to 1,500 Rand, for example. Meaning now, both your shares now cost 3,000 Rand. You bought one for 1,000 Rand back, but you bought two, meaning together with 2,000 Rand. Now, over five years, they have increased by 50%. Now, and you're owning shares worth 3,000 Rand. That's capital gain. If you sell now, while their value is each at 1,500 Rand, you will get your money as 3,000 Rand. When you get the primary amount you put in, which was 2,000 Rand for both shares, each at 1,000 Rand, and you get an extra 1,000 Rand, meaning the capital gain of those shares. But each share gain with 500 Rand. Because you had two, you gained 1,000 Rand. Because 500 Rand, 500 Rand. That's the capital gain of how you earn money from shares. 
The second way you earn money is through dividends. When we talk about dividends, it's when per quarter or per year, it based on each company. So do not say this universal. Some companies don't even pay out a dividend. So it's based, you must do your research as per company. I love to use a money web. Money web does provide me with information of a particular company. If this company pays a dividend, if this company doesn't pay dividends. And the other companies who do not pay dividends, but it's really easy, good to invest in them for capital gain sake. So you must also take that into account. So capital gain, sorry, our dividends are basically when a company's board of directors, management sit down and decide, we have made profit this, this quarter. Let's give our shareholder a piece of our profit. They're still using Capitec. The board of directors for Capitec will sit down with themselves and say, yes, we have made so much money this quarter. Let's give our shareholders dividends. What they mean is that the net profit they made, they will give us a certain, they'll give you as a share or a certain amount based based on how many shares you uh, you you have. For example, they'll say for each share that you have, we'll give you a hundred rand. So because you one share of capital costs a thousand rand for that particular year, and they say for this quarter, for every thousand rand share you have, you'll get hundred rand. Meaning for that quarter of that year, you get 200 rand because you have two shares from Capitec Bank. Now, when the directors also, when the board of directors and everyone in management of Capitec say, we're giving you that, meaning you who have two shares worth a thousand rand, you'll get 200 rand for that quarter. If they're doing it every single quarter, meaning every single quarter of the year, you'll get 200 rand, 200 rand for holding those capital shares worth a thousand rem. Next year, it may increase to giving you 200 rand per share, or it may decrease to giving you 50 rand per share based on the performance of that company for that particular year. Do you understand? And sometimes it really is good to invest in a company that gives you dividends. The dividends may be smaller, it may be sometimes be. 2% of the value of the share that you hold, or it may be higher, it may be 5% or 10%, but if the company capital gain continue growing and the dividends continue growing, you end up earning more than you expect. And sometimes you even need dividends for some other companies. You may invest in a company for a long run. For example, I'm investing in, for those who are following me on Twitter, they have seen, I, I was talking about the paper group. The Purple Group has seen a large increase. When I first first invest, invested in them, they were pay, they were, their shares were like 30 cent per share. Now they're like around one rand, they, they hit the one rand, I think four days ago, they hit the one rand mark, but they still, they still went back to being around 80 cent. And that's a capital gain investment for me. They don't, Purple Group doesn't pay out dividends, but I am investing for the capital gain interest. So that's the beauty of knowing which company you're investing for and what's the purpose. Is it capital gain or is it dividends or is it both? That's the importance of it. And for me and my audience, I really want us to understand that. It doesn't matter where are you investing, either New York stock market, investing in Facebook, then Microsoft, Apple, or Tesla, or you're here in South African, South African market and you're there at Sasol, you are there at Capital Bank, ShopRite, or you're even in Australia. Whatever market you're in, it really is important to understand that. And here's a catch, the beauty of it. When you invest, most of the time for what I do, I do not enjoy the benefit of dividends. Whatever company pays out dividends, I have never, as Ivan Sambo, enjoyed them or take them out as a reward for my investment. I reinvest them to create what is known as compound interest or compound dividends or compound uh, uh, capital gain or whatsoever you wanna, go, you wanna call it, but it's, but it's compounded. Basically, I'm taking the dividends they give me and I buy more shares with it. Do you understand? I do that with like, all, all of my stocks, all my investments. Whatever money they pay me out for holding those shares, as a reward for that, I buy more of that company. Because now I'm seeing growth in that company, because the company I'm, only, I'm holding for long term, let me put the money there, but I'm not losing the money, it stays there. And also, 
it really is important what you're doing that will take to account that you're never losing in the GC, you're never making profit if you're holding. It's only when you withdraw your money that you make a loss or you make a profit. For example, if I'm holding Sasol right now and Sasol drops by 50%, I'm not going to make any loss until I locked in that loss of 50% I withdraw the money left there. But if I keep that money there and just ignore it, I'm not making any loss. Seriously, I'm not making any loss. The same thing for those who follow me on Twitter. I, I've been talking about this camp. This camp is one of the companies in my portfolio that is doing really, really bad. But I haven't made any loss because I haven't sold it. I'm still holding it. And I know the reason I bought it and I know in the long run it will recover. When it recovers and makes profit and I locked in that profit and I take my money out, I have gained. But when that man, your company is still at a loss and I take my money out, then I have made a loss. But while it's still there in the market and you haven't locked any loss or profit, you haven't suffered any loss or any profit. So that's the thing you need to take into account. So those are the issues you must take into account. This is a short into the point video. So do ensure that you like it. Leave me a comment, tell me which company are you buying? Which company are you interested in understanding if they have dividends or they don't pay out dividends? Tell me in the comment section. I will look into those comments and I will reply to you as I always, always do. I am Ivan Sambo, your student investor. Thank you so much for watching.